today, folks. I'm back with a quick tips and, well, might not be that quick, but anyway, a tips and traps video on dialing in the print head registration on your automatic press. Obviously, we're working on an Anatole, but the same principles should apply to most autos that have sidebar regos. So some autos have um, clamps that are at the back and some of them at the side. Um, I think on standard M&R has the back and the front, certainly a rock has a back and a front, but um, on the Anatole at least, the registration bars for the print head, and you'll see why I'm expressing it that way in a minute, um, are on the side and they need to be dialed in. It's something that could go out in time. Once, if you've got a brand new press and it begins to settle, you find, you know, the metal might move a few mils here and there and you have to tighten some things up to get it fully bedded in and then it's it's locked in. But I've never seen a video done on what I'm about to do. Plenty of videos out there on actually doing registration and that's great too. But actually dialing in the rego so that it's super accurate uh, with the platen before you um, begin to actually use the press and, and register each print job. So um, I'll probably just bring the camera down a, a little bit here. What I'm talking about in simple terms is the arms, where this arm sits, uh, whether it's, it's sitting parallel to the center of, of a platen. Um, we won't look at the height and that angle, but obviously you need to have the height exactly right when you're zeroed out on your off contact and obviously you have to have it level and you have to have the two arms uh, obviously level with one another but i'm talking about the positioning of this arm where it sits in terms of the center of the uh, platen the, you might say well, what's the point you know if you can move a um the completely out of shot if you can move the um, screen around inside what's the big deal and um, fair enough, you know, if you're doing a simple one color print, but if you're using any kind of um, uh, jig uh, set up for your registration when you put your films on the screen that you're setting perfectly to um, a particular location on the screen, then it's much easier to register when the arms on the print head are set correctly. So I'm going to try and talk us through how to do that. Uh, probably might be a bit of a clunky video with bits and pieces, but uh, follow on. I hope this is helpful to you. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get a nice clean platen, a bit of pl new platen tape with a new line drawn on it so that we know what the dead center of the platen is. Uh, don't be tempted to use one of your old ones. It's slightly harder to see um, when you're, you're viewing it through the screen a little bit later. So heat your platen up as usual. Um, Index your platen back to the center, remove the platen tape, put some new platen tape on and uh, set your line and then we're ready to go for the next uh, part of this. Uh, I don't normally remove the platen tape so this could be quite interesting. Make sure your platen's a bit warm when you do this, it's just easier generally for it to come off. This looks like PMI tape, dual, dual stick PMI platen tape. We also use the paper tape as well. Um, but they probably were doing hoodies on this yesterday. Just come in on Saturday to um, to do this little video. Um, but yeah, we use PMI dual tape, I think it's called, um, for hoodies because it is incredibly strong. Um, it's not so good, we find, for T-shirts because... Um, it's too strong, <laughs> so um, we'll often swap it out for that. So there's the tape off, i get a new piece. Okay, so here's some new platen tape. This is a new roll of it, so I'm just gonna unpack that. It'll be easier said than done, there you go. Out. A quick tip on using platen tape. Most platen tape will come 
in a poly bag, you see with holes at the end that you can just slide it out. Keep the poly bag and reuse it. And particularly if you're in a um, non-arid climate, um, because platen tape often sucks in moisture and it can get a bit lumpy, we find. So keep it in the bag, keeps that uh, moisture out of it. And we do our platen tape in a particular way. We normally do this for two people because it's a lot quicker. Um, the guys will probably remove this because they probably won't like the way I've done it. And we'll do it a lot better, but we'll at least get the general idea. We'll pull that back. Got a little Stanley blade here that I use. And then what we do is we get an old one, put it in the center, pull up the tape around it and use this roll to stick it down really smooth. And find that that removes any bubbles that may occur in the tape. Wrap it round, push that pretty tight because sometimes the action Or putting on a t-shirt on and off all the time will just catch those. Sometimes the guys, I don't know if you saw it, but they actually tape the corners sometimes. Okay, there's a new platen tape. Now we want to measure it. So now we want to measure it. Just get our measuring tape and steel rule. That's not a particularly big one, but should be should be all right for this. Okay, now we've got a center line. Um, what we want to do is get this round to the print head and start to work on getting a screen ready so that we can use it to measure exactly where we want. Now, if you're not using some kind of super funky um, CTS system, uh, computer to screen system to create the, uh, or to burn the screen, burn the artwork onto the screen, you'll probably create some kind of template like this. And I might say, this is well worth doing. If you've got a lot of color jobs, it's gonna save quite a bit of time using a good setup like this one. It's not hard to do, it's pretty straightforward. I'll just bring the camera down. You can have a quick look at ours. So we've got several of these for different size screens. Um, this is the one we use for the screens that we use in the auto. And as you can see, it's just really a piece of wood on a wood backing that's glued on uh, with a perfect right angle. Move that forward so you can see it there. Over here is a perfect right angle to accommodate the screen. We've got a template printed onto a bit of film positive here, a bit of film, and it is perfectly parallel. The, the film actually goes right up to the edge here. It's perfectly parable with parallel with the straight edge and you can see it's got a number of numbers and center markings and measurements because we use a side clamp um, automatic press we don't generally need to be that accurate with that position because the screen can be moved in and out uh, to precision pretty easily but obviously we want to be as accurate as we can as it were east to west so that's why we've got the center markings and the um, perfect 90 angle degree edge here. And we use this by basically putting the film down, getting the sellotape on the underside of the, the film and lining the film up perfectly and then sliding the screen in, locking it in, dropping it down, adhering the, the tape to the screen and then removing the tape to go and shoot it in the um, exposure unit. I've got a screen here that's pre-done, just to, to show you how it sits. So I'm gonna lock that screen into the right, and pull it back so that at the bottom here, it's right nested nice and neatly in the, in the groove. And I know that that is, is perfectly set. 
and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the center markings on this are perfectly aligned with our center line that we have uh, down in here. So I'm going to use this screen to set it. You might say, well, what's the point? Well, if we get this as near as we can to being as accurate as it can conceivably be, and we get the print heads rego system, which we're going to set up today, accurate, then every time I do a color job and the guy set this perfectly, it means that the, not quite like a CTS, but the screens, when they go into the press, are as near as accurate as can be before you start to uh, twiddle with any micro reg. And in most cases, people will be able to, to connect it and lock it in really quickly. But if this doesn't work, if this system is, is inaccurate, and obviously if the print heads are inaccurate, then there's no point in doing this quite as detailed as this. Why does this all matter? Let me tell you. Bring this up here a second. This really matters because with an automatic, well, with any press, really, uh, when you've got a big multicolored job, you want to register as quickly as you can. In our industry, everybody is talking about the need, quite rightly, uh, to make sure that the processes throughout, from cradle to grave, so from artwork through to reclaiming a screen and everything in the middle, that, that we make sure that they're as efficient as can conceivably be. And I can tell you now, if you've got, let's say, I don't know, a 10 color simulated process job to do, and those heads are out, and even if this is working really well, it's going to take you ages to get that um, registration nailed. And so the major stumbling block on an auto, particularly when you get going, is making sure you can register quickly. If you've gone from a manual to an auto, you will have completely nutted out how to do the registration manually, and you can do that pretty quickly, generally. But if you move to an auto, you'll find that that's a big bottleneck is getting that done. And of course, if the press is not spinning, you, your inefficiency is gone. It, it stands to reason. So being quick with a teardown, quick with a new job, quick with a rego, um, so that you, you keep that press, spin, press spinning, easy for me to say, is going to make uh, you much more efficient throughout the day, particularly if you've got multiple jobs. Let's say you've got 20 jobs to set up. Well, each one of those is going to take time. So getting a system like this and getting it nailed down, dialed in tightly, is going to save you heaps of time. So... Um, that's how we would do it. I'm just going to drop one more line in it. I think this is a screen that's been used already um, just to give us a little bit longer a distance to to measure when we get on the platen. I'm just going to get my paper, my pen. Guys will go crazy at me if I'm not careful um, for doing what I'm about to do, but Let's just get that in. I'll put it up here. Just so we've got another longer line so that we can measure pretty much the full length of the board. Okay, now that's done, we're going to take it over and have a look at how the heads are aligned. And then I'll show you how to realign them. And uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, so we're back at the print head now. And I'm going to show you how we align the actual uh, print head arm for registration. Before we do anything to make sure we get this really well nutted out, we want to make sure that we zero out the registration system. So on an Anatole press, the registration system is on the, the, the right hand arm. We've got a rego micro reg here that moves the um, screen in and out, moves the arm in and out. And on the side, we've got two registrations that um, move the screen this way. Um, so first thing we want to do is actually um, bring in our how do I do this? Um, our platen that we've we've replaced the platen tape on and we've got our center line. And um, then we want to actually zero out the registration. So I'll show you what I mean by that if I can get this camera a bit closer. I might have to get a lot closer. Let's see. Okay, well, let's have a look at this micro reg setting here. Get a little bit closer so you can see it. You can see in the um, optic here, just give that a little bit of a clean, um, that the micro edge is out. So we're going to um, turn this handle, or this dial, 
until we bring that uh, micro edge in. If we get this right, you can see it moving over, I'm doing this through the actual camera, so it might not be so accurate. I feel a bit far away, but anyway, we can just get that dial in a bit quicker. That's pretty good. Just slightly out there. That's pretty good. Come back a bit. So that's zeroing out the um, micro edge, and we'll do that on the back one in a second. And um, switch this lens back. Get my finger out the road. Yeah. So what that means is that press is now once once I finish that in a second, that press is as near as can be to it being zeroed out in relation to the platen. Now what we have to do is find out how the screen sits, because screens are different sizes. We, we use a particular size, I think the 790 by 800, no, no, 590 by 600 by 790, that's what they are. Um, and we want to make sure that they're all zeroed out correctly and the arms are positioned correctly. So I'll show you how we do that now. Okay, so now we're back at the head. I want to show you how we actually get the arm zeroed out. So the micro edge is zeroed out, which is where we want it to be. But let's actually check where the arm sits with the center of our board based on of our platen based on the line we dropped in, which I hope is accurate. Um, and the screen locked in against this, this side arm. And this is where we start to actually, this is the bit that nobody does. This is the bit that actually is, if you've got everything else in place, and you don't have this in place, it's pretty pointless doing the reds the way we do. So this is a bit I've never seen a video on. And um, yeah, it's not that technical, but a lot of people don't think about getting this right. And it makes a huge difference. So um, I've purposely put this one out <laughs> so that you get a sense of it, because it just so happened it, it wasn't as bad as I thought. But anyway, let's have a look. So I'm going to get that screen that I used earlier on, and I'm literally going to feed that into the print head there and in order to make this work I need to make sure that this screen is locked in parallel with the gate here that holds the screen in place so I'm going to move the screen in you can see that moving I need to make sure it's it's in all the way back so it's not in you know partially off like that it needs to be in completely which is why we needed to zero out the micro edge we're going to clamp that in now on the Anatole press, see if I can show you this console. Yeah, excellent. Um, on the Anatole press, there's a, a, a setup system. It's called Easy Setup. And when you first start using this press, you think, oh, well, you know, probably won't use that much. It's actually brilliant for indexing um, the, the primary platen that you're going to use or the, or the print that you've done to actually get things registered. Um, anywhere around the press very, very quickly. But the other cool thing about it is when you're in setup mode and you bring the platen up, which you can't quite see, get down here. Um, dial in that rego nice and easily. So now we've got that up, we've got the lines there. Let's have a quick close look at the registration. It's perfect. Uh, it's not perfect in that it's um, accurate, but it's perfect in that it's out. So you can see, hopefully down here, that rego, which is perfectly aligned in the screen based on the template we used, is actually out from our center mark. I'm going to say it's three mil out. However, at the other end, it's only about a millimeter out. So I'm hoping that you're able to see that now okay so we've ascertained that it's a little bit out so i've just shown you um and again you might say oh why does it matter sam it's only a few mil you can adjust that with the micro edge well again just want to labor this point setting up an auto with multicolor when you haven't got full cts takes time and all the time that takes and the testing that takes means you're not printing anything just like normal screen printing right so getting this dialed in and quickly set up is is key to making sure that your platen stay warm and you get onto the next job as quickly as you can 
sounds like this is what I spend my time doing, coming out, telling the guys to be a bit quicker. But remember, these things can do 500 plus. I think we, I think the maximum we've run this is 560 garments an hour. And you've got four people on the press when you're doing that. But if you're setting up for half an hour, you've lost 250 t-shirts. You can't get them on the truck that day, right? So it really does matter. So the key here is not to move the micro reg when we're setting it up, but to keep that screen locked in and to bring the arms that are holding the screen in uh, into alignment with the actual uh, template that we've set up. Okay, okay, okay. Stop the video for a moment. I just need to interrupt my own video. That's how bad my <laughs> instructions are on this. Um, I realize I, I probably am beginning to confuse some people. So I just want to break in and explain. I'm not saying that you don't need to use the micro registration to register a job. Okay, you do. Every job you'll need to use the micro reg. I'm talking about setting up the press so that when you come to need to use the micro reg, you don't need to adjust it very much. So you're setting up the press to be uh, more in line with the template that we use to put the film onto the screen. So what I'm saying here is um, you're not, you're not going to use what we're about to do to register your job. You're just trying to get the press set up much more accurately so that when you do come to register, you can use the micro edge. I hope that clears that up. Certainly clears it up in my mind, I think. Okay, back to the video. And on an Anatole, that's super easy. We've got uh, a whole load of, I'll just show you the arms because this might be, Okay, well, I just want to show you the connections for the arm. Um, you can't see it, but there's a big bolt underneath here. Sorry, a big nut under here and the head of the bolt on the top. And then you'll see there's another one at the bottom here. Um, they are set to allow you to lower or raise the arm to make sure you get it completely parallel and totally level across the platen, um, but also level in, in um, tandem with the other arm to make sure that the off contact, you know, it, it isn't off um, from left to right, as it were, but is totally level and can, can sit nicely so you get a nice smooth print. But also on this, you have these wonderful little uh, bars here that are easy enough to undo. Um, that allow the arm to move this way and that way. And then, of course, you lock them in and there's no surprises for guessing. That's exactly what we're going to do to get this arm lined up. The other arm doesn't matter so much. Um, you do want to allow for a little bit of movement in the screen um, on that side, on the other arm, which doesn't have the micro edge on so that you can actually move around and, and just refine it by half a mil or whatever it needs. But this is the one that matters. Um, in terms of dialing it in. So I'll just quickly do that now. Okay, well, I don't know how to do this without getting my stupendously huge body in the road. <laughs> um, so apologies for that, but um, I think you can see over here. So I'm just going to loosen that one off. I'm going to do the same with the one at the back. And I'm literally going to tap this, this head, sorry, this arm on this head, moving it over while holding down the... Um, screen mesh against that center line and that will obviously move that screen over until we get it exactly where we need it i want to be pretty accurate and this is one of the reasons i wanted a whoops a thin line on the platen to there we go to make it a little bit more accurate obviously if you you know register up against a thick line you know, the thickness of the line is going to prove the inaccuracy. So we've got a thin line here. I'll just tap the other one in. And this is where I apologize for being, there we go, perfect. Back a little bit in the way. Now I've done that one. This one needs to move a tiny bit more. Lovely. It takes a little bit of 
jiggling it around to get it right. Still out a little bit at this end. Right, brilliant. I've got those nice and snugged. Don't over tighten those, there's no need. Um, and that is, if I can bring this back so that you can see it perfectly aligned at both the front and the back. Okay, that's that um, side arm on this print head done. As I said, we don't need to do the other side. You might just want to check that this side is aligned at least parallel because when you pull that clamp down, you want to make sure that it's, you know, aligned correctly with the screen so that you get a nice clamp across the beam of the screen, the metal part of the screen, the frame. Um, but you don't really want to move it so that it's snug. You just, you do want a little bit of a gap there um, to make sure that uh, there is that, that movement with the micro edge. Now all I have to do is repeat that process 10 times. But when I have all of those print heads, uh, the arms, the retro arms on those print heads will be as near as can be to being perfect. Um, you might use a tri-lock system on the platen, which will allow you to register super quickly, super quickly, super quick. But you'll need CTS to make that work really well. If you haven't got CTS, then the system that we're using, which as I say is pretty uh, straightforward, um, is the best way to go. So now, once I've got all those 10 done, if they've got a 10 color tomorrow or, or a nine color tomorrow, um, so I don't know if they have, um, what will happen is they can bang that screen in really quick, get it locked down, check the rego, move any micros that they need, which will be, just be very fine, and then they move to the next one, the next one, the next one, until they're done. And that might take, on a nine color, that might take 10 minutes, maybe 15. Um, but if any of those are out, it's going to take you half an hour. It can take you an hour or longer even to set up a big complex job like that. So that's why this is important. No one's ever done a video, I don't think, on that. Uh, but it shows you how easy it was to work on the Anatole to get that rego um, set and zeroed out with the arm and the actual uh, micro reg for uh, each platen. So thanks a lot for watching. Sorry it's such a long video. Um, I enjoyed this one. It was it was kind of cool to do. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next time. Don't forget, before you go, to ding the bell, to subscribe. Yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes. Um, but for now, thanks so much for watching. See you later.